Morgan and Lena from The Amazing Race. I did not see this coming. The edit was very sneaky this episode. Uh, Steve and Anna Lee just kept making one huge mistake after another. And then they got to the pit stop before you. What happened? Man, we couldn't find the parking garage. We couldn't find the parking garage. We and... got a parking garage. It just it just wasn't the right parking garage. <laughs> and unfortunately, unfortunately for us, when we made it up to the tower, when we came down to get directions, a lot of people kept pointing us the wrong way. So we ended up running to other bridges because people thought they knew where they were and did not. I think it's also important to say, I don't know if in Slovenia that like the dragon bridge is officially called the dragon bridge. Like it's just a bridge that has dragons on it. So I think like we're, we're like in the locals, we're like the dragon bridge. And they're like, I guess there's a bridge that way, you know, like they're just, it wasn't a straightaway shot. So it, we really struggled with that part of directions. And the navigation of driving um, and, and both the self-driving legs that, that was hurtful. I mean, that seemed difficult. What was the most painful part of that? City centers are just a bunch of one-way streets. So, uh, you know, it's hard for Morgan from the back seat to kind of like see the street signs. I'm seeing them first, but she's got the map in her hand. So a lot of times, like if Morgan's, yelling, I already can't tell my left from my right, but when she's yelling, right. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this that quickly, like without having like, like getting yelled at for swinging the car. So and um, Lena's not the best driver in general. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the world's so, best driver. Like, I'm not winning the best driver award for our, sure. Our goal was to drive safely. Um, that was all that I really cared about. So it was, in general, city centers were really tough. And um, and for us, we were one of the only team. We were the only team that did not have a very, very proficient stick shift driver. Everybody else had grew up driving stick shift or actively drove a stick. So we were at a disadvantage a bit uh, in Slovenia. But especially stress-wise, not just the actual, it's just the stress of dealing with the stick shift while getting directions. Morgan, do you regret giving Annalie that pep talk? <laughs> while, well, she was, while she was crying at the airfield? You no, know, you build real relationships with, with the rest of the cast. I mean, you have the honor and pleasure of traveling the world with this group of people. And we love Stephen Annalie. Like you can't really see that on TV, but we were very, very close with them. And when Annalie came up and she was crying, it's like they hadn't really been at the bottom. We had been fighting for our lives multiple times. And so as a friend, as a human, I was just like, Annalie, your dad is out here kicking ass. You need to support on, you need to support him. You need to love on him because he's out here fighting every day with you. And like, they didn't show that part because it doesn't fit her narrative, but it was, I didn't want her to think that they were out. And in our point of view, like there are no what ifs on the race. So if it was not going to be our day, it was not going to be our day. Uh, but we were going to fight like hell until it was proven that it was not our day. You know, so I don't regret it at all. Um, and we're very close with Annalie. Like Annalie's like our sister. So I think it, also what, the right thing what kind do. of people would that make us if like Annalie was sitting there crying and and we just let her cry like it's so inhumane and um I agree with Morgan because I was flying while she was doing that like Morgan did the right thing in that episode and I, I hope other people watch that episode and realize that like everybody is human and we all need to step up to the plate sometimes to help people who aren't having their best day doesn't and mean we were letting Steve and Annalie get to the mat first right right <laughs> like speaking of not having your best day I mean you two your sisters you butted heads throughout the race at what what point of the race do you think you were the most annoyed? Like, what was the most stressful challenge where you two just wanted to wring each other's neck? Germany finding the parking garage. When we got we... to Cologne, I about lost it. Um, <laughs> we had driven perfectly the whole day. Then I'll say for me, Lena, you can say what was for you. For me, we had driven perfectly the whole day. What people don't see is those are multi-hour drives. It's two-hour drives from the airport to the Rhine Valley, from the Rhine Valley to Cologne, two-hour drive. So they're long drives. Um, which are stressful in general. But when we got into the city and Lena started that, I don't know my right from my left. I'm like, Lena, we need to drive safely. I don't want to hear that you don't know your right from your left. And we don't have time for this because we were in first and we were far ahead. Um, and we lost our lead because we could not find the parking garage. And it was infuriating because what you don't see is we drove around that area for over an hour and a half in one area. 
And we just could not get to it because of construction and one ways and pedestrian streets and that kind of deal. So for me, that was the most infuriating. It was also just incredibly unlucky for us in that area, because I think a lot of teams, you know, after driving around just happened to turn down that road and they found the parking garage because everyone was struggling the same way we were struggling. We were incredibly unlucky. And at one point we had to park our car and walk and and we like that was that was our strategy that we changed we parked the car we got a different set of directions and we walked until we could see the parking garage and we got back in the car morgan started driving and we reoriented ourselves because there was only one direction that you could you had literally go over the bridge reorient yourself to get onto the one way to get into that parking garage it was so frustrating um because we knew that we were five minutes from this garage and that every minute we couldn't put the five minutes it was no. 30 seconds, but could not get to the street. Okay. I mean, literally there was a, there was a cop that was like, Hey, I, I will bike you a bike cop. That was like, I'll bike you to this garage. And I was like, we can't because the rules say that we can't follow you to the garage. Um, So it was, it was very hard for us because at one point you were like, this sucks. Like we're, we saw Chelsea and Robin, we saw Greg and John and we're like, we're literally losing first right now. Cause we can't complete putting the car in a parking spot um the the two of you were on the verge of elimination a couple of weeks ago you were neck and neck with ian um and and joe so you did get some luck there what was that rickshaw experience like when when yours took off in another direction and you're like okay is this the the day we're going to be eliminated and and what was that experience like just going through the streets of jaipur like that so it was a crazy day because we were screwing up at the mural challenge we went to the dolls. We did it in under 10 minutes. We were super, super speedy. And we got to the rickshaw and our rickshaw driver is like, hey, you're last. And we're like, oh, that's a problem. But we know this game. We need to go because we don't know where we are. And you don't actually know where we are. So as we're getting ready to go, we see Ian and Joe. And the guy's like, relax, you're last. And we're like, no, we're not. We need to go. And so our driver had very low battery in his rickshaw. So he couldn't go that fast. There was a junction where Ian and Joe got stuck, but they had a lot of battery in their rickshaw. <laughs> so by the time we got down the mountain, they're flying. Our driver's going as fast as he can. They come up like this, as you see on camera, and they wave to us. And I pointed and I said, do you see them? We're about to lose right now. And all of a sudden it clicked. And he literally within like 10 to 15 seconds turned down a side street, which got us to the mat faster. And so it was like a stroke of luck because if we had not, if he, they had not waved, we would not have, have made it. What, when you look back at this race, you know, what are you going to take away from it? And, and just the cultures you got to see, even if just for a brief moment and having this experience together as sisters. It's, uh, it's the biggest blessing and opportunity um, ever. Like it doesn't get much better than this. And there's nothing that can replace what we got to experience. And there's nothing like it. So I mean, Morgan and awesome. I are Morgan and I are better than ever. I think that we found a way to turn a new leaf where our appreciation for what we both bring to the table, like emotionally, physically, whole nine yards, um, has been reimagined for both of us. And I think as sisters, you know, it's been a few months since we've left the race, but I can say positively, like my sister is a best friend to me now. Like she's not just my sister that like we, we fight. Um, we've had really incredible times together. And one of the best experiences of my life, which is the amazing race is now our shared experience that we'll get to keep, um, you know, until the end of our days. So we're, we're just so happy that CBS gave us this opportunity to work on our relationship and that Morgan and I were able to be a competitive team and, and give some great TV. Well, you were certainly fun to watch and uh, congratulations on making it as far as you did. And thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank you.